My name is Andrew Morris. I'm a retired electronics engineer. Back in 1973, I created a gadget uh, that uh, turns off, uh, turns a uh, amplifier on or off with a uh, tape deck or a, a turntable. Uh, but it's no longer, it's not compatible with modern technology, so I created an updated version of it. And here it is. I have two of these. Uh, <clears throat> this one was used to turn a, a speaker system on and off with my uh, TV in my bedroom. I have another one that uh, looks completely different than this one because it was built into another outlet strip, but it's electrically the same, which turns a speaker system on and off with my laptop computer. For purposes of demonstration, uh, we're using lamps because they're easier to see the gadget work. This is a 14-watt a desktop lamp that's been fitted with a, uh, a uh, uh, magnet electronic ballast that I've taken from a CFL bulb. This one is a uh, incandescent high-intensity lamp. If you use this thing to switch a uh, fluorescent lamp on and off, particularly one that has a electronic ballast, uh, then it won't turn completely off. So you have to uh, disconnect the capacitor C6 in here and its series resistor if you're going to use that kind of load. Otherwise, it's fine. The purpose of those components is to suppress voltage spikes that might damage the, uh, the circuit due to inductive spikes from uh, a inductive load like a transformer or a motor. Really, there's not a lot, of, a lot to see here. Basically, when you turn on your TV or your computer or whatever master load uh, you have, about a second later, the slave load will come on, your speakers or, or whatever. And of course, when you turn off your TV or computer or whatever, your speaker or whatever turns off. Also, it has a bypass switch, which used, used to be the on-off switch on this outlet strip. When, that, when it's in the bypass mode, the uh, slave load will stay on regardless of the status of the master load. And, and that's about it. Now we can take a look at the insides now if you like. There's the electronics. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. It's a pretty simple circuit. It uh, should mount the triac on the metal surface if you can. Uh, if not, you're going to have to use a small heat sink. Uh, use an isolated type, as like was specified in the parts list, so you don't cause a shock hazard. That's about it. I've got a little, I used a little terminal board here so I can easily remove the circuit board for service if I need to. And I guess that's about it. Thanks a lot for your interest in my gadget.